Good afternoon, everyone. Just going to give it one or two minutes for people's Microsoft Teams to, to click in and work so they're in the meeting. And while I'm just waiting for everybody to get themselves sorted, I'm just going to pop my usual couple of graphs in the chat column. So bear with me just a moment um, and, and I'll start in, in a minute or so. And hopefully everyone can see these. Um, just, just let just let us know in the chat column if you can't uh, see them at all. And um, I, I know colleagues can can assist in reposting them if we need to. Okay, then I, I think I'll start if if that's okay. So. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks once again for taking the time out of your busy day to join us for our fortnightly COVID update for Warwickshire. I recognise a lot of your names in the chat column, which is lovely after so many months and starting to get to know you. But just in case there are any infrequent attendees here today, please let me introduce myself. I'm Jane Coates and I'm the COVID testing lead for the county and I'm based in the public health team. My ever-present colleague, Fidelia Richardson, if she isn't here yet, she will be here momentarily. Um, she'll keep an eye on the chat column, so please do use that function for any questions and comments you've, you've got. Of course, these meetings wouldn't happen without the direction of your early years advisors team, and today we've got Jessica and Dawn here, and I'm sure they'll pick up any comments that you want to make that are specific to the core early years offer. So I want to open today with a really serious pat on the back to you all. It's absolutely accurate to say that the early years and childcare sector in Warwickshire is coping and performing phenomenally well. And all credit must sit with you all for the way you're handling infection control measures in your settings. You're all brilliant. These are really trying times, particularly as the rules move to recommendations and the amount of grey area around decision making increases. But you really would make a fantastic case study into how you've managed to achieve results in spite of the many challenges to your organisational resilience and within your settings broadly. The overall pattern of outbreaks in early years settings shows a consistently low level with you all staying well on top of individual cases and doing a remarkable job of limiting transmission. Looking at last week's outbreak data, there were only two outbreaks in early year settings and both outbreaks were in the small category, which means fewer than 10 cases. I wish the ways that you are all so obviously approaching hygiene and advice to families could be replicated so well by others because what you are doing really works. So well done to each and every one of you. You are doing an incredible job and helping lots of people stay safe and well. In terms of the wider picture of outbreaks, what we're seeing right now is a drop actually in numbers across education in early years and a rise in workplaces. There's a theory being reviewed just now that those people who are most affected in work break outbreaks, workplace outbreaks haven't been vaccinated. So our efforts to myth bust and promote vaccine take apart, as you might imagine, already underway. So I've started a bit back to front today and not opened with the countywide case rates, so I'll move on to that now. Last week, the rate for Warwickshire was quite high in comparison to our West Mids neighbours, and the Neaton and Bedworth was topping the charts at the lower tier local authority level. What we've started to see since the tail end of last week and over the weekend is case rates rising in other areas, particularly Staffordshire. So we still have some relatively high numbers, but we are no longer the front runners in the West Midlands. If you have a look at the graphs in the chat column, particularly the first grey bar chart and click on it to expand the view, what you'll see is the data we received the more, it, this morning and that shows that the Neaton and Bedworth Borough is still the Warwickshire leader at around 590 cases per 100k of population over the rolling seven day period. 
All three areas above us are, as I said, in Staffordshire. And an interesting point to note, actually, is that both Warwickshire and Staffordshire have really high levels of testing, both PCR and lateral flow. And I'm sure, therefore, that the two are not unconnected. In, in fact, I saw a report last week that showed that across the West Midlands, Warwickshire's district and borough areas held four of the top five slots for per head testing rate for, for population. Stafford actually came in at number three, but Warwick was number one, Stratford number two, Rugby number four, and the Neaton and Bedworth number five. North Warwickshire, which of course doesn't actually have a dedicated in-person PCR testing offer anymore, came 18th overall out of a total 43 areas across the West Midlands. So even then we're still performing extremely well. For us, in terms of health protection behaviours, this is really excellent news. We've set out the importance of testing. Clearly, we've done well to communicate the messages, but most importantly, people in Warwickshire have listened. The pink bar chart in the chat column shows you the slightly fluctuating position with countywide case rates. And we are, as you'll notice from the far right of the column, just on a uh, back on an upward slant after a few days of drop off. Positivity, which is the number that describes how many people out of 100 taking a PCR test come out as positive, is at around 10%. So one in 10 of every person who takes a PCR test in Warwickshire is currently testing positive. The number is actually higher in the Neaton and Bedworth with 13 out of every 100 people testing positive. The, for, for comparison, the West Midlands average rate is about 10%. So, so broadly speaking, with the exception of the Neaton and Bedworth, we're in line with um, rates in the region and also with our near neighbours in Coventry and Solihull. Solihull is a little bit above us and Coventry is a little bit below us. I took a look at the ward areas with the highest numbers of positive cases over the last seven days. And you probably won't be surprised to know that they're Weddington, St Nick's, Wembrook and Attleborough, all in the Neaton and Bedworth borough. The only exception in the top five is Lillington in Leamington. Um, and I think that does, you know, fairly accurately reflect trends over time in terms of case rates. I'm sure you'll be fully aware by now that some schools have opted to move to remote and blended learning for pupils in an effort to contain transmission. This has been a really, really big story over the last few weeks, both locally and in the national media. Face coverings are being brought back into some schools where there are higher numbers of cases. And indeed, my own 14 year old is full of complaints about the return of classroom face covering wearing in her Coventry based school. Testing and specifically the testing of people who've been in close contact with someone with a positive PCR test result is a really, really hot topic of conversation. Again, not just in Warwickshire, but more widely too. The government rules are now such that we can't require people to take a PCR test if they've been exposed to a positive testing person. But what we can and are doing is to recommend the taking of a PCR test where exposure has been identified. I ordered a home PCR kit for my daughter last night following advice from school and the online portal does actively reject your request for a test unless you tick very specific boxes. In my case, I selected the testing on the advice of my local authority box, given that she doesn't have symptoms. I think for some people, particularly those who aren't familiar with um, accessing tests online, this can be quite a difficult process to, to navigate. Um, we'll always do what we can to advise uh, and give information out if, if you feel that would be helpful. So, so I guess on the back of that, just a reminder really to please take care when asking parents to consider getting PCR tests for their exposed children or themselves. We can only advise or recommend this rather than require it of them. And this can feel a bit muddy for, for some people. Given the increased demand for PCR testing, we opened an additional mobile PCR testing facility in Warwick over the weekend, which we hope will stay in place into October half term. 
This is because the demand for PCR tests in Warwick District has been particularly high over the last couple of weeks and the, um, the static testing facility in South Leamington has been almost solidly booked at very, very high percentage levels, well up into the 90s, making it difficult for some people to get a testing slot. So we really hope that this extra capacity for just a few weeks will, will ease um, the situation for people. I do just want to remind people, obviously, that when um, asking for a PCR um, test, if you want to attend a site in person, you must book online um, because if people turn up to the site without a booking, they will be turned away. Lastly, on testing, I don't think I can pass by um, without reference to the story that was in the national media last week about the processing lab in Wolverhampton and the fact that they'd uncovered a number of inaccurate um, and incorrect negative um, PCR testing results. We've had information, uh, we have lim sorry, limited information on this other than confirmation that the vast majority of samples that were being processed in Wolverhampton were coming from the South West and Wales areas rather than from the Midlands. We've been told that anyone who um, had a, whose test was processed at the lab in the last few weeks is being contacted directly by the National Test and Trace team and they'll be advised to take a further test. We don't have any indication that many or indeed any Warwickshire residents were affected. I've scoured around for other items of interest for you, more on the basis of their impact to your wider networks and the families of children using your services. I thought it was worth mentioning that across the county, case rates are rising in the over 60s age group, which potentially affects some of your grandparent carer cohort. We can't accurately tell whether this increased case rate is linked to vaccine immunity waning um, or lack of participation in the booster jab programme, but they are both avenues that are being explored to see if we can understand what's happening a little bit better. I haven't talked about hospital beds for quite some time, and I know as we get into the winter pressures period, it does become a central topic of conversation. The greater impact is very much seen as affecting our older population and possibly more so this year because colds have really hit with a vengeance now that easier transmission opportunities have become the norm again. Bed capacity in hospitals is linked not just to the number of people who are ill, but the number of staff available to operate wards in hospitals. And, and like any other setting where people catch colds and sick leave goes up, this is exactly the sort of scenario that can lead to wards being closed and the number of available beds being reduced. NHS colleagues as well as us are pushing really hard to promote uh, the flu jab this year to try and stave off at least some portion of sickness absence that might otherwise occur. I'm waiting on my own um, invite from my GP for my flu jab, but I know that quite a few high street pharmacists are already delivering jabs to those who have to pay for one. If that's you and you haven't done it yet, please do consider finding some time to pop across and get your flu jab. The last topic I was going to cover today was the secondary school vaccination programme, which I'm sure affects you and your families to some degree. The school's immunisation team, which is part of Coventry and Warwickshire Partnership Trust or CWPT, will have visited 90% of secondary schools across Coventry and Warwickshire by the end of this Friday. We are the top performing area in the West Midlands in terms of vaccine take up in the 12 to 15 age range. There is, as you would expect, um, variable take up rates across schools and indeed area to area, with some schools seeing around 80% of pupils being vaccinated with the one dose of Pfizer that's on offer. This drops to somewhere around 35% in other areas and there does appear to be a geographical slant here with lower take up in the northern parts of the county. As you might expect with a massive and rapid rollout like this, there have been some teething problems which are being worked through very quickly day by day. Some schools in Stratford last week had their vaccination day suspended due to staff shortages at CWPT. But just in case you were aware of that and were looking for some reassurance, all of these days have been rescheduled so the pupils will not be missing out. Some pupils do, of course, miss out um, on their uh, vaccine opportunity due to sickness absence or some other reason. And sessions are being put together to make sure that everyone who wants to be vaccinated does have the opportunity. 
Right, I'm going to draw a breath there. There was an awful lot in there and I hope there was some useful information. Um, so I'm just wondering, are there any questions from anyone, please? I'm just going to click onto the chat column and take a look now because I haven't been watching you all. Um, does anyone have any questions? I've clearly done another really thorough job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's absolutely great. Um, obviously, if anything occurs to you after today, or oh, we've just had a, a lovely long question here. Um, thank you, Yvonne. We were notified by a parent last Thursday they were waiting for results of a PCR for her and her children. Later that day, her test came back positive and our child was negative, but she would keep him home as she couldn't get him to us. Monday morning, she phoned again to say she had a further PCR test, which she was not sure why, and this result came back negative, but she would stay in self-isolation until the 22nd of October, as per the first guidance. Is this something you've heard of before? Always thought not to retest if you've tested positive until after 90 days. I, I can honestly say to you, Yvonne, um, yes, we wouldn't recommend it. Um, I, I think... It, my, my perception, and obviously it's based on nothing other than my own personal opinion, is that some of the stories in the national media last week about inaccurate PCR test results have caused some worry and concern in individuals. And perhaps it, given this case that, that the mother tested positive, but her child didn't, I guess it's possible that she could have thought she may have um, herself received an inaccurate PCR test result and has therefore gone to get another one in case she was negative. Um, I think what she's doing is the right thing and it would be what we would recommend if she was possibly able to do that, which was to continue with the self-isolation. Um, the, the fact of the matter, and, and we've been here um, numerous times, particularly around lateral flow testing, when there had been an awful lot in the press um, right throughout the year about whether lateral flow tests were deemed accurate enough. Um, the fact of the matter is no test for anything is 100 percent accurate. There are always going to be instances where people get the wrong test result that could either be due to user error or it could be due to some fault in the in the actual test itself. Um, we probably wouldn't really recommend repeat testing, um, particularly given that the message we've been given by Test and Trace is where they have any concerns about the veracity of the testing results people re um, receive, they will contact those individuals directly rather than put out a, a, a mass call to people because obviously that could generate some degree of panic or, or concern, I guess. So I hope that's helpful, Yvonne. Do, do we have anything else from anybody? No, well, that, that's fantastic. Thanks so much all again. It's lovely to see you all here today. Um, I, I think we probably might as well end it there. Um, I'll hang on here in the call um, for a few minutes in case anyone wants to stay on and just grab me at the end. Um, but otherwise, look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks. Take care, everybody.